Let's break down the CAPM so it's easy to understand. Here on the top of the screen is the CAPM formula. There's four variables that go into this formula, so let's go one by one so there's, it's very easy to understand. What you're trying to find with the CAPM is this here, the expected return of asset I. So we're trying to find how much percentage points in a year will this asset return on its investment for an asset, and we'll call that asset I. And then it's equal to, so the risk-free rate, and usually this would just be the rate that you can earn on a U.S. government treasury security. So it's assumed to be risk-free in the field of finance. So the risk-free rate plus beta, see this, B-I, that's a beta of asset I. I'm going to break that down in more detail soon, okay? So this is just how this asset moves with the market. And then the last component of this is we're multiplying the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate, okay? So the expected return of the market is just what we expect the overall market to return in a given year. Think of the S&P 500, all of the stocks combined, that is the market, or all of the bonds or whatever market you're looking at. Beta measures how much asset I moves with the market. The market always has a beta of one because it moves one for one with itself. So let's say the beta of the market is one, and this is the return of the market plotted against a period of time. So the price of the market goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down again. So let's say asset I actually has a beta of 0.5. This makes it less risky than the market. So we'll see when the market goes up, it still goes up, but only by roughly half as much as the market. When the market goes down, it goes down, but only by half as much as the market. So you can see that it is far less volatile than the market. But let's say that instead, th this asset, asset I, has a beta of 1.5 approximately. You'll see it goes up by more than the market when the market goes up, but then it goes down by more than the market when the market goes down in price. And back up, it goes up by more than the market, and then back down, it goes down by more than the market. So with the beta above one, an asset has more risk than the market itself. Now this last component here is known as the market risk premium. It is the premium in which you are compensated as an investor for taking on a risky investment such as the market portfolio over the risk-free rate. Now let's solve this formula twice with a beta that's higher than one and a beta that is lower than one. So let's say that the beta of asset I is two. So this is a very risky asset to have a beta that high. So we're gonna say the expected return of asset I is equal to our risk-free rate of 3% plus our beta of 2 multiplied by our market risk premium, which is 10% minus 3%. So this gives us a total expected return of 17%. Now let's see what happens to our expected return if we use a lower beta. This time we will use a beta of 0.5. So this is not a very risky asset. So our expected return on asset I in this case is still the risk-free rate of 3%. Plus now we use a beta of 0.5 and we still have the same market risk premium of 10% minus 3%. And this time, our expected return of asset I is actually equal to 6.5%, which is far less than the 17% that we got when we had a beta of, at, of 2. The security market line is the visual depiction of the CAPM model. So here we have a graph with on the vertical axis, we have expected return. So as we increase along the vertical axis, we get a higher expected return. On the horizontal axis, we have beta. So as we move from left to right on the horizontal axis, we see an increase in beta. So the security market line plots the expected return that we should receive 
for a given level of systematic risk, which is beta. For a given level of beta, we should receive this much return. That's the orange line. And we see here in the green is the expected return of the market, then that would have a beta of one, right? So anywhere we go above or to the right of this green dot here, we're getting a higher beta than one, but also expected higher returns than the re than the returns on the market, okay? So this is also used as a valuation tool. So let's say a, an asset actually returns about this much. So the asset returns this much, and it has this much beta. Well, this asset is above the orange line, right? It's above the security market line, so it is undervalued. So that red dot is undervalued. But let's look at another hypothetical asset that this asset returns this much, but it has this much risk. So it returns less than the red asset, but it has more risk than the red asset. So because it's below the security market line, the orange line, we say that the that brown dot is overvalued. That asset is overvalued. Now, if you wanna learn more about this topic and systematic risk, check out this video on systematic risk.